particular evening, I was feeling a little bit tired, so I asked my wife to, to do the driving. So I guess that gave me the chance to you know look around, look on the side and so on. All of a sudden, we have a, a troop of uh, kangaroos approaching from in an angle from the left forward, and it was quite quite sudden. There were few few roots that jump jump in front of us, but my wife had to break a little bit, and there was probably one or two that uh, jumped to to the left into the bush, and all, all of a sudden, in, in that moment, where those um, Beard to the left, I felt that there was another one running right, right next to me. So then I naturally, obviously, I, I look uh, to the side, a little bit over my shoulder, on the left, and then, then I noticed this uh, very big kangaroo, you know, big roo. And um, it was very strange because um, my brain was trying to make sense of it, and it felt like, you know, time slowed down um, and I was looking at this arm, arm moving sprinter rather than a kangaroo. I would say I naturally concentrated on the, on the head and what I could see was this sort of um, humanoid figure. Pretty much like, uh, you know, a 100 or 200 meter uh, sprint runner, you know, moving exactly the same way, you know, with the arms, you know, uh, swinging back and forth. And uh, probably because of the angle and my attention on the face, I barely could sense the, you know, the, the legs um, moving. I didn't, definitely I didn't look down. And when well, my brain was in this uh, conflict between asking questions like what, what the heck is this thing is a kangaroo no because kangaroos don't move the arms this way is this a human no because to hairy look at you know the round head you know kangaroos don't have that type of skull and then also sign I noticed this muscle you know this sort of like canine looking uh, mouth and it, it was what I remember is felt quite gentle actually you know I didn't feel like a long, aggressive uh, uh, muscle of a uh, nasty uh, creature, like, I don't know, like a hyena or something like that. It was it was quite gentle and soft in the way that it went from the forehead, you know, into the nose. And it wasn't too long, it was uh, fairly short. And I definitely also remember looking at the ears, you know, the ears were set in the same way that um, humans have ears, you know, uh, but they were quite pointy. And, you know, they couldn't, couldn't really tell, I can't tell you the color, but essentially it was the tonality, you know, the level of darkness or lightness of the hair was pretty much like the bush around. And then, I, you know, like, you know, I was in this sort of brain struggle and all of a sudden I felt it was about to look at me, and, and I really felt this uh, dread, you know, this, this sort of intense fear. Because then I, I kind of started to realize that it was wasn't definitely a kangaroo, was some sort of weird creature, and perhaps was angry because we have just stuffed up his, his dinner for the night. And my wife, you know, who was looking forward and driving the car, wasn't aware of it. So then I thought, if this thing you know, looks uh, turns around and pushes us. We might end up, you know, going off the road. Uh, but luckily, you know, it didn't uh, look at me. It just turned, you know, abruptly towards the left. And it, it was disappearing into the bush. I remember seeing very clearly the trapezium muscle and, you know, the back of the head, the ears. And that was it. And, and I would say the entire encounter probably happening. I mean, you know, because... Time slows down, it's kind of hard to tell, but I would say maybe six, seven, eight seconds at the very most. And then, you know, I mean, of course, you know, I looked at my wife and decided to say nothing. My kids were, were sleeping at the back. I were completely baffled and I kept it to myself. Um, I'm a, I was aware of creatures and, and see, like, things like that and, and strange things have happened in my life before, so it wasn't extremely, extremely weird, but 
weird enough that I didn't tell anyone. I think a few months later, I told my brother. You know, my brother lives in, in the States and I you know, sent a, a message to him and then we talk about these things. And a couple of years later, in 2017, when I was um, sharing a studio with you know, a few people, there were two two women there that um, uh, some original heritage in the family. We were talking about, you know, the things I told them uh, my story. And one of them mentioned what she described as a nunuku, uh, sort of an, an ancient uh, being from the dream time who essentially is like a custodian of the bush. And she said that probably the elders in her culture very possibly, you know, have interactions uh, with creatures like that in secret ceremony. But of course, you know, she not being an elder, uh, she couldn't really corroborate that. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I can tell you. Okay, so this was around May or June of 2015. It's 8 p.m. at night. Your wife's yes. driving. And well, uh, pro probably it's more like 9 because I think we left around 8. You know, we normally try to, to arrive there to, to have dinner and to put our kids in bed, but uh, I think we were a little bit late. So my guess is that it was around 9 o'clock. If you've turned right onto Woi Woi Road and you, what you say you're about a minute or two down the road? We take uh, Woi Woi Road, we cross this little very young suburb, and at the end, before the National Park starts, there is the uh, Rural Fire fire uh, Service uh, headquarters. No, it wasn't even a minute when when this, uh, you know, after passing by the, the, the headquarters, it wasn't even a minute when this happened. Your wife's driving and yeah. she sees some kangaroos on the road. She's dropped her speed to about 50 or 60 kilometres an hour. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, the road is 80. Uh, so she, she brought, uh, broke a little bit um, hard, but I wouldn't say super hard. And um, we, we missed a couple of kangaroos, you know, luckily we didn't hit them. And my guess is, my, my estimate is that probably we dropped it to 50. So definitely we didn't stop. So probably 50, 60 kilometers at the most. Now, the kangaroos are spread to both sides of the road. One goes to yes. the left, and you think another one's come back out at that stage, or you're thinking at this moment that it is a kangaroo. As this thing's next to you, how far away from the side of the car was it from you? I would say a metre and a half, two metres. I wouldn't say more than that. Where was it situated? Was it directly beside, up beside you, or was it a little bit too the back of the car? A, a little bit to the back because I remember I had to look hard over my shoulder. Uh, I wouldn't say next to my kids, maybe between my window and theirs. Have you turned your head and looked at it directly? Uh, yes, yeah. While it's running beside you at 50 kilometres an hour or 60 kilometres an hour, is it keeping pace with you? Is it keeping speed with you? Yes the average human can only run about 30 kilometres an hour. Yeah, no, yeah. The, uh, the record was set by Usain Bolt in 2009, and that was 44.7. Now we're talking faster than an Olympic sprinter. Yeah, yeah. Keeping pace with your car. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Now you're looking at it, you're observing ears on the right side of its head, they're not on top of the head like a kangaroo, it's on the right side of the head, and you mentioned that they're small and pointy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much like a human, but, but I mean, like, you know, like the size, but pointy, yeah. I mean, like, they are the size of a human, human ear, you know, from, if you, if you throw parallel lines from the top of the ear, roughly across the eyebrows, if you throw a parallel line from the earlobe roughly across at the bottom of the nose. So it's roughly that size, but very pointy, like like what, what you would see on, on a drawing of a, what do you call it, you know, like, like a gnome or a fairy. What height was this creature? It's hard to estimate, and I have the feeling that the road is a little bit, uh, you know, the, the side of the road goes down in that area. But I would say easily, easily to meet it, easily. 
Easily two metres. Well, that's, yeah. uh, you're saying easily at least six and a half feet then. Yeah, yeah, easily, easily. And, and now, uh, anything from two to three, I would say, you know. Just quickly back on the ears again, you're saying they're the same size as a human's ear, but it has a point at the top, so therefore it doesn't quite yeah. look like a, a human's ear? Yeah, the shape is not uh, human, no, no, but the size is small. Like, you know, in the position of a human's, but certainly not the shape of a human, yeah. You mentioned in your submission here that the hair wasn't too long or too thick, but it, it was covered in hair? Yeah, all over. That I could see skin through it, you know, like when, when something is not too hairy and somehow you still can see skin. A little bit like a guy that is going bold, just to put it in a way, you know, so then you can see the, some of the individual hairs popping out of the skin. A sparse type of hair, was it? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has pretty much that tonality of the cool moon, you know, that sort of greeny, grey, dead type of colour. I guess you're seeing it pretty much from the waist up. Yeah, I, I remember in the periphery of my vision, I still could see the front of the sides. You know, when a runner lifts the knee on each leg? The, the front of the side, every time that a knee was up. But I definitely didn't look down. So I, I, don't, I didn't see any feet or what sort of legs he had, things like that. You're concentrating on the face. You're absorbing everything on the face there. Can you go into as much detail as you can of that face? It was very round. You know, the, the, the sky was fairly round and like human. It was. It felt very humanoid, like you know, like a guy with with a muscle. You know, that's kind of the best way that I can describe it. Very short hair, as I said to you, uh, not too dense. There was this very gentle slope, you know, this ge very gentle curve from the glabella, which is where the forehead joins the nose, right on the brow ridge. It was a very gentle, nice slope towards the nose. So that I think that's what gave me that feeling of gentleness. Short muscle, but fairly strong jaw, you know, a bit like masseter muscle, which is the muscle that opens and closes the jaw. No teeth whatsoever, I couldn't see any teeth. You know, the mouth was closed. From my angle, the eyes felt small, very was set deep into the orbit and very dark. But maybe watch just the angle that I was looking at. You know, maybe if I had looked at me, I, I would have seen some eye color, but they, they felt quite small, deep, deep set, and, and really, really, really dark. So you're saying that the, the eyes were deep set. Does that mean it had very pronounced eye ridges? Fairly. Yeah, fairly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anything like, uh, say, a Cro-Magnon scar or something like that. But yeah, it has a, a fairly, fairly pronounced ridge. Yeah, brow ridge. Did it have much hair on the head in comparison to the rest of the body? Well, again, you know, because I was focusing on the hair, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I had the feeling that I was relatively the same length all throughout. What I remember though is that hands were moving. In the periphery of my vision, I felt that the fingers were fairly long. And I, in a way, it reminded me of you know, those drawings of Dr. Seuss, when the fingers are hairy and you know, they end up on a, on a long tip. It felt a little bit like that, but dark and by the end. So then I, sort of, I was thinking that probably were the claws. But the fingers definitely had her hair, or at least that's what I could tell in the grave room. And so maybe maybe there was some more hair towards the forearms and, and the back of the hand. I really, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, what, what I could see, I wouldn't say that any any bit was essentially much hairier than, than the rest. Everything was covered with hair. Even the immediate face was covered with hair? Everything, everything. The mask or everything, but was fairly short so then I, I guess uh, that's why I noticed you know the, the roundness of the skull I didn't see any hair hanging on the side of the 
of the muscle. So perhaps may, maybe I could say that the muscle will have slightly shorter hair, completely covering hair. You mentioned that it had a pronounced snout. Can you talk to me more about that? I mean, how pronounced was it? Compared to a normal human, maybe five centimeters forward. You know, comparing that, like you know, the, if if you think of the tip of the nose and the chin, add five centimeters forward. So, are we saying that that was more in terms of some sort of relic human, or are we talking more like dog shaped? I felt that was more like dog shaped. Because he has that feeling of, you know, f- uh, finishing some sort of darkish nose. Uh, I mean, for example, you know, you, you know that in a human you have the tip of the nose and then the philtrum, you know, the, the, the nose uh, comes back into the mouth, into the uh, orbicularis oris, you know, the muscle of the mouth. And then you have the philtrum, which is that, that like indent uh, at the top of the top lip. This thing didn't have that at all. It was like a dog. Um, you know, when the nose finishes, it just comes down straight to the chin. And this thing was like that. You know, the, the, if you go through the nasal bone, you know, which was the very gentle slope, as I said to you, and you reach the tip of the nose, then just imagine that you go completely vertical down to the chin. So it was pretty much a, a doggish looking nose, upper lip, bottom lip, chin. So basically a, a canine type protruding mouth. Yeah, yeah. Yet the rest of the head looked more humanish. Yes, yeah, but hairy, yeah. But yeah. hairy. And, yeah. And, and with pointy ears, yeah. I think that the nose was, the nose itself, you know, was pretty much like a doggy that was not like, you know, dark. Um, my guess is that, um, yeah, dark, probably without hair, small, or darker than the body, I should say. The nose is protruding, similar to a dog. Yeah, yeah, pretty much like the drawing that they sent to you. You drew this yourself, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's close as I kind of remember it. The hair was pretty short. And, and as you can see in the drawing, you know, the tip of the nose just comes, you know, in a straight line towards the chin. Well, that looks very canine, the way the nose comes down and the, uh, the jaw protrudes. Yeah, yeah. That's why the feeling that I had was of a dog or a fox. On two legs. On two legs, yeah. I felt that it was like a very lean, strong, 100-meter runner. That, that's how it's like a hairy one, of course, and big. But it felt, yeah, they didn't have any, any particular, like, you know, maybe a, a hump or something like that. They didn't have any of that. It felt like a very lean, strong runner. Did you notice at any stage that it had an expression on its face? No. No. As I said to you, when I felt that it was about to look at me, it just then hard left and disappeared. Any reaction to you whatsoever? No, and thanks God for that, because I think if I had looked at me, probably the experience would have been way, way harder. You mentioned there that you had this horrible dread, this, this feeling of dread, and you were scared that it was going to look at you and you're going to lock eyes. Yes. Yeah, I think it will have, yes. Could you estimate any sort of age or gender to this creature? It felt male, yeah. What I know, I really don't know, but it essentially felt like a male. I couldn't see, say, testicles or things like that, you know. Um, So uh, just because of the upper body, I felt there was a male. You could notice the trapezius muscle and the roundness of the head and the pointiness of the yeah. ears, etc. Uh, the proportions of the muscle and the frame of the body, was that the same as a human or somewhat different? It felt like a very well-developed 
a trapezium, perhaps a little bit too well developed. Maybe maybe it would be hard to find a human with a trapezium that high. So maybe that was slightly not quite humanoid. All the muscle insertions and so on. Yeah, pretty much like a bodybuilder. And you know, when you feel each muscle individually very well sculpted, and I felt that that way. It didn't have much and fat on the body. No, no. As it's running away, you've turned to your wife, but you said nothing. Have you told her since? No. Why not? My worldview is very different to her. So I know that she won't believe me, and yeah, essentially she would say that I'm talking about silly. So I haven't told her. Yeah. And I don't think that I will. I will tell my kids when they are a little older, probably, but yeah, I think I will keep my wife away from it, you know? Woi Woi Road's the location of the Gosford hieroglyphs. I'm not quite sure if you've been there before. Uh, that's also had some talk of Yowie sightings in that area. Now, I've spoken to people in regard to sightings around uh, Carryong and Mount White in the past. The Woi Woi Tip. We have a, an older report from Woi Woi back as far as 1968. But particularly around the Brisbane Water National Park, you know, we've spoken to several people who've uh, had sightings there, and we have uh, one documented from 1990. Uh, we've got uh, Gosford, 1986, Mooney Mooney, 2013, and there's quite a few that have happened up and down the Hawkesbury River, and we've documented 1995, 97, and 2015. But none of them really describe what you saw. I mean, you, what your sighting here, it's sort of like almost in the ballpark of what the Americans would term as a, a dog man. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with the, with that cryptid. So they seem to be always a little bit more canine, apparently, you know, in, in, in America. Yeah, so that's why, oh, look, essentially the reason why I contacted you is because I wanted to know if someone had seen something similar. Many witnesses have trouble come to terms with what they've seen? I mean, sometimes even years later. How did this encounter affect you afterwards? Look, uh, as I said to you, even though I have a um, background in science and things like that, I, all my life I have experienced weird stuff. So even though it was quite, you know, daunting and weird and, you know, I, I'm not that unfamiliar with stuff like this. Um, never exactly like this. In a way, it wasn't too bad, you know. Uh, as I said to you, you know, if I, if I had look at me, or if I had tried to give a bump to the car or something like that, then probably the story would be very different. It, it definitely changed my life, but at the same time, I wouldn't say that I'm traumatized or that I had, you know, nightmares or not, things like that. No, not at all. I'm more curious. A little bit scared, but I also feel very, very curious. Perhaps if the situation, the encounter had been a little bit more full on, maybe it would be different, maybe I would be quiet. Does it change your view of the Australian bush? Yes. Now, I think I would stay, you know, very close to my kids, you know, just, just to make sure that they're okay. So yes, it had changed my my idea of what might be around, for sure.